trainable. Yeah, you're teaching her how to run through the garden. No, I'm teaching her to use the path. It's going to come back and backfire on no, you. No, she actually, the other day, she was tossing that little teddy bear around back there. And I'm like, and I was standing over here. And I'm like, come on, come. And she actually walked around and came through the path. So, Should, shouldn't awesome. you be teaching um, Jax how to run through there? I'm not. I, have, I invest zero time in Jax. Huh? Do you want to come? Come here. What do you want to learn today? What do you want to learn today? Anything? Yeah, get him, Joey. Get him. Anyway, no, I, I like you for two seconds. Sit and behave. Very good. What do you um, think? Look at He's well be. Oh, God! I think he just licked the lens. He's hungry. Relax, the buddy. He never gives you attention is when he's, it's dinner time. Oh, he anyway, adores let's me. Let's do a quick 2022 shade garden update. Um, the backbone of this garden is always usually the same. Uh, I don't change it up really because it doesn't need it. Everything is pretty established, but we had a super dry year. So I figured here it's August. We'll try to show you what things look like without watering them. Um, this garden actually never needs to be watered. Uh, there's a few things like unless I newly plant something, I would have to water it. But for the most part, all of the pastas in here tolerate shade dry um seasons unlike last season which was amazing uh but then also on the left side is a little bit more sunny so we'll walk through some shade plants um how they fared for this season any companion plants and then some of the sunnier plants that are in bloom right now because that's always a bonus in a shade garden can you uh, be quiet we're trying to film here bud <laughs> um so uh. first and foremost this clump of Japanese Hakone grass. This is the Plain Jane variety. This is like the original, um, all green, but obviously I love the texture. She doesn't like when I pet it. Um, but yeah, look at this. I mean, there's nothing better than this plant for texture and the deer don't eat it. So you're also, I'm gonna highlight also which varieties and what plants the deer don't eat. And I am the first one that can tell you because they walk our property every night and We've already had some very disappointing damage this year, but I'm moving on from that. Uh, next, sage. So early spring, this got trampled or frost or something, and it usually is massive. It's usually half the size of that rock right there, but something happened to it. I had to help it, to help the leaves unfurl for some reason. It was like some type of damage, but considering it didn't get as big and as lush, but it's actually like a happy small clump. It's not really suffering. It doesn't really look like it's being affected by the lack of water. The size is the only thing that happened. It, it like is 50% um, what it normally is in a normal season. Uh, so that's been an interesting thing. It's healthy, so I'm happy with the way that it looks, but it definitely should be like this big knockout to match the boulder. So. Uh, in the front, lungwort, there's a bunch of different things, um, varieties mixed in here. So the one with the more silvery leaf, this is Opal Splash. This has sort of a white, palish pink flower. And then the other one, which is probably very um, common, that's the original lungwort that has the blue and pink and purple flowers in the spring. It definitely looks like it's terminal. It's mm. spread. That's yeah. horrible. Well, some of the, some of the, um, original ones. I really want the opal splash in there, but it's very clump forming. Whereas the original variety with the sort of, um, with the blue, pink, and purple flowers, it tends to spread more. So it's sort of taking over a little bit. And this is a different type. No, that's the same one. It's just a bigger, happier clump. That's just the plain old longboard also. Um, this is Epimedium. My son's baseball. <laughs> Um, this will get some coloring up in the fall and the spring on new growth. It's got beautiful foliage. Right now it's kind of just like sitting here waiting for some rain. Um, but that gets beautiful little spider-like flowers. That one is called White Wedding. This beautiful lime um, hosta is called Gold Standard. That one is usually more limey, um, more like guacamole color like this. But interestingly enough, it doesn't get a ton of sun, but the leaves are bleaching out a bit. And I think it's, I think that's because of the lack of water. Uh, I've never really had it do that before. It usually stays really limey and very green. So 
kind of interesting this year. I think it just doesn't like the dry, um, the dry conditions, and I don't blame it. This is Brunnera, good old Jack Frost, and you can see this is sort of starting to crisp up in places. Not super happy with the dry season. That definitely, definitely likes more moist soil, more consistent moisture. It is established a bit, so it's tolerating it. It doesn't look as bad as it could, but it's okay. Um, and then in the back, that one. And then this one is called Hosta So Sweet. And that's because the flowers are fragrant. And this is a hummingbird favorite, so I leave the flowers on this um, just because they are fragrant, even though I can't quite smell them from the front and they're not super strong unless you get your nose in there. Uh, but the hummingbirds do visit these in particular, so I love leaving them. Uh, and I had, I started with three little one gallon clumps and now they're big, gosh, two and a half feet sections. So that's exciting. And then way back here is, I think this is Great Expectations. This one, um, I have great expectations of this getting huge and it's three years now where it's not huge. So, and this year is a little dry, so I, I don't expect it to be super vigorous, but we'll see what happens. Maybe the fourth year will be its leap. Lots of, lots of weeds in here. So we have gold leaf bleeding hearts. This has the limey foliage instead of the plain green. We have some astilbe, which is done blooming. And then Hosta Sting. This one is beautiful. I love the pattern. Um, the craze about that one is that whole interior leaf pattern, which is amazing. And then they're really dark leaf edges, with dark green edges. This is supposed to be Lunamol. It's sort of evolving. Um, it sort of changes and looks different every year. And I'm not sure why, but it's beautiful. It's happy. Can't complain about that. Little guy is called Pasta teaspoon because it looks like little teaspoons and then sun mouse is right in front of it those cute little <laughs> these cute little guys um little dwarf pastas which is fun i have literally weeds everywhere um this was a streaker hosta that i purchased and i still have some streaking going on if you see in the leaves some of it has reverted to this so we'll have to see how this shapes up. It's got a pretty flower on it. It's kind of a pale lavender. Kind of looks like pale butt cheeks. Mm. I could see why they call it the streaker. Yeah, no, this is the streaker part. This is no longer streaking, but look at, see this leaf? So it's got like these streaks in it. That's why it's called a streaker. I like my description better. Of course you would. This is autumn frost. This is a pretty popular one. Um, very thick leaves, thick substance. So the, the slugs don't really bother that. That's another thing in this garden. A lot of the hostas um, have really good substance to them. So they're thicker leaves. They're like coarser leaves. I think that helps with the slug situation. I do have slugs and snails, but I never really have a ton of damage, even last year with a wet season. So I do know that I have a lot of the hostas that have thick, really kind of corrugated leaves uh, and I think that helps this little guy is so cute this is St. Elmo's fire it's got some red petioles uh, then I have an unknown one here but that seems to be really happy and really starting to to fill out so I'm excited about that I've mixed some peonies in um, peonies don't really grow great in the shade but you do get blooms they're just smaller and less abundant so you can grow peonies in the shade. You just have to expect that they're not gonna flower as much as you want them to. This is either Big Daddy or Blue Daddy. That's been the ongoing question for a while. Um, but again, nice big corrugation on the leaves. Um, just a massive, massive specimen. Has beat out Hosta elegans for size. This is the second year now. This used to be the queen in the garden and now this one has sort of gotten bigger. So if you compare the two, they're sort of, they're the rivals right now of who's the biggest, but I think this one leaf size is winning. That one's pretty dense of a clump. This is kind of more sprawling and large leaved. So different habits. That's so fun. most of these hosta deer don't like to eat them, right? They love them. 
They do it's because the deer buffet. I know it looks like a, a salad bar in the middle of the garden or you the woods, what? I should say. This is like a lot of deer food right here. This is a garden that I do consistently spray because they love hostas. Um, they don't care if the leaves are thick, if the leaves are thin, they could care less. They come here, they eat from the buffet, but it's August. Nothing has really been munched on yet. I, actually, I do have a little bit of damage behind there, but it's that clump is so big that you can't tell, but we'll show you. So um, what about rodents? Why wouldn't rabbits come around here and start eating this? We've never had a problem with rabbits. Maybe because we have a good fox population. Maybe because we have a big dog. Maybe just because they're down at the other house. No, I think it's because we used to have a good fox population, and now that we have a dog, we won't have one. Well, so she, she serves the purpose, too. I think uh, Bucks Bunny and friends will be showing up here soon. Look, my, my hummingbird feeder is empty, and the hummingbird is like, um, there's plenty of flowers. I'm surprised it didn't go to a hosta flower, but I am yapping. So this one is hosta curly fries. I love this hosta. I, you know what? I really love the combination of lime and purple. It's like amazing. It's a golden jubilee hyssop that is lime and purple. I love that plant also. But if you look like even the flowers, see how pretty the purple that the flowers are and then they have this, this purple stem. It really like is oppo opposite, um, I don't know. They're sort of like opposites coloring wise. What am I trying to say? They complement each other, but they're like, you know, lime and then purple. I just, I love those two colors together. They're like you and me, baby. Mm. Oh yeah? Yeah. Am I purple and your lime? We complement each other. Oh, is that what we do? Well, when we're you not being... a great job filming. Thank you. Yes, when we're not being sarcastic as hell. Yes. <laughs> I know. Um, what else? We have El Nino, which is this guy. Um, so this was an interesting year for El Nino. Usually it's bluer. Uh, about this time, if we have really high heat and drought, it fades a little because the wax um, starts to come off of the leaves and hostas are blue if they have that blue color it's because they have a thick layer of wax on the leaves so the higher the temperature and the later in the season the more likely that wax is going to start to melt away and you're going to go back to the plain green so that's an interesting fact about hostas um and then praying hands which is this is such a fun hosta it's cute it doesn't really get super big um but i like that i kind of think i should add more praying hands to this um, and maybe give it a little bit more of a of a front row seat in the garden. I don't know. Um, anyway, this is Ivory Halo Dogwood. This has been consistently sprayed this year because uh, it got eaten over the winter. So it started out super little. You can tell it's kind of growing this way a little because the sun is this way. Uh, it probably wants a little more sun than I give it, but I love the variegation on this. So this is green and white foliage. It's a pop back here, which I love. And hopefully it's gonna get big enough to be sort of a good backdrop back here. Uh, that's my hope for this. I may have to wrap it this year in the winter though, because the deer tend to just take it right down. So would that turn into a bush if you kind of left yep. it alone? Yep, it's gonna be, uh, it should be pretty big. It should be like up here. Um, given that it's growing in the shade though, Usually the maximum maturity sizes are a little smaller, a little more leggy. So while it can get four to five feet tall and wide, if it's in the shade, it either may take longer to get to that size or it may not reach full maturity. Uh, but we'll see what happens. How old is that one? This one, I want to say three. Three years old. Uh, I have some June hostas in here. And then, wow. These are cone flowers I grew from seed. Look at the size of the leaves. These are seedlings. You know what, they never bloomed, but apparently they're um, thinking that all they need to do is put leaves out. They're huge. No flowers. Which, so next year they'll bloom? I don't know. They're in the shade, so I don't know. I might have to move them, but those are massive leaves. Holy cow. Is that why the leaves are massive? Is because they didn't imagine. give a, a bud? I grew those from seed though. I also collected those um, seeds from my garden. So who knows what I created, but that is a massive amount of huge leaves on all of them. So I would imagine it's from the shade. 
This is bronze peacock. This is the Rogers flower. And this is the color of the foliage if it gets enough sun. This is also pretty shady back here. So it's starting to actually um, separate, I'm not separate, um, grow. It's actually starting to spread and getting new foliage here and there. I don't know, we'll see. I hope that turns bronzy. I kind of wanted a bronzy color for that patch. Looks more like a turkey to me. Hmm? It's not a peacock, it's no. a turkey. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where that, that name came from, but. Uh, this is one of those hydrangeas that blooms on old wood and in zone five, they just don't love winter, and I don't blame them. They never bloom. I can't say they never bloom. They very rarely bloom. If they do, it's like one flower here and there. If this was another zone warmer, it would be the most gorgeous hydrangea ever. But unfortunately, the buds don't survive our late freezes. So we'll get this warm up in spring. The buds will start to swell and then we'll get these late frosts and these buds will be zapped and there goes the old wood blooms. So we tolerate it. It's a beautiful filler plant. This has like amazing color and it just looks awesome for having a very dry season. It looks amazing. So it's a victim of frostbite basically. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's never, it's pretty, but it's never like gonna bloom how I want it to. I think this is cherry something. Cherry has cherry in the name and it's beautiful. The flowers are amazing, but unfortunately it just doesn't bloom consistently ever. Well, um, maybe we can put a, a heating blanket out here or something. You know what? I want to just like wrap them in a little globe and just like protect all the ones, but what are you going to do? You know, this is um, hummingbird. This is a plethora. So this gets beautiful spikes of flowers. Actually, this one is open down at the bottom. You see that? Is it fragrant? It is fragrant. So this is a beautiful one. This guy looks a little gnarly. He's kind of split in a V and I keep um, pruning it back by a third in the spring, which is what they like. But it keeps kind of just doing this leggy thing because it doesn't get a ton of sun, but it does do well in the shade. It does bloom. It just, this one in particular looks a little gnarly. So. If you have one that's like mounding, like the hydrangea next to it, it would be better. But this one got neglected and moved around and it's doing well considering the torture I put it through. Now you're gonna have to cut this back cause it looks like it's all over the place. Yeah, that's what I said in the spring. I cut them back by a third. All right, beautiful. You okay with that? Yeah, well, yeah. sometimes, you know, your words go right in through the ear and right out the other I one. I can tell by the questions you're asking. Well, hey. So this guy looks like he needs a little something. It almost looks like he has a little iron deficiency going on. Um, but that is a rhododendron, or actually an azalea that is supposed to bloom later than all the other azaleas. It does well, but the deer eat it. So this one is deer food, deer food. Um, I don't know. We have a big patch of also um, iris. It's the only iris that I grow. Someone was, do I dare get into the iris, um, to the iris like realm of flowers? Because I've seen some really pretty ones out there and people are like, do you grow iris? I do, I only grow one variety. It was given to me and I haven't yet entered that abyss of iris prettiness, but I may have to. Uh, what else? So back here, we're just now, usually the deer eat this stuff. Oh, actually they've already started, look. They've already nipped it off. So these get, this is the um, chocolate simisifuga. These get beautiful white plumes and there's multiple blooms on each stalk. They get really tall, so they look good in the back of the garden, but unfortunately the deer kind of eat these before they bloom. And even, they're so thin that even spraying them, I feel like the deer are like, oh, there, it doesn't smell that bad because there's not that much um surface area on them so i don't know how much of that stink actually stays on the buds so it's very rare that i get to see those bloom beautifully every fall but um but these guys bloom really nice these are anemones and these are fall bloomers tons of buds as you can tell uh but they all some varieties of these also spread though so you have to kind of manage them a little bit they do pretty well underneath this japanese maple which has actually done quite well hmm. 
considering the drought. It does have a little brown, you know, these brown little dried up pieces on the leaves. That's pretty typical. It's seen better days. This was the one we does, rescued. I know. It does not look that good. Yes, so, it does. No, it does Considering doesn't. the drought and the, and the spongy moths. Well, maybe you should break out the garden hose and come back no, here I and spray it drought. once in a while. It got, it got eaten by spongy moths. It got eaten, like, we have four-line plant bugs this year. We've had a drought. It's like, trust me. If I put you in some pretty adverse conditions, we'll see what you look like. You do every day. I know, I probably do. Have you seen the kitchen? Actually, look at this. What do see we this have big going guy? On? See this big guy? This is some in substance, right? So you see it looks like dinosaurs came and ate the leaves? <laughs> you see this? Yeah. That's me pulling off the dead brown from it drying out in the high heat in the sun. I felt like it looked better taking that brown like this look it just looked terrible like it was all drying out and i feel like somehow it just looks better taking that off blame it, it on like, the deer it looks like something ate it as opposed to it just being absolutely tortured by the heat and then this beauty is a um, ruby spice plethora so we had the hummingbird plethora in the back over there that blooms white this one blooms pink and it's fragrant and it's beautiful this year i don't usually get a ton of blooms on this and the clematis is actually... Now that's a late bloomer? Yes, these are, the clethras are fall bloomers. Man, that's tangled in there. I might have to leave that. Uh, but yeah, so that's pretty. And I've, I wanted this to fill in because I like the pink against the Japanese maple and you know, the dark burgundy with the lime with the sum and substance. I kind of like those combinations um, color wise. This is a tree peony that did not bloom this year. And I'm not sure why, but I can tell you by the size of the buds, look at this. It's gonna bloom next year. Look, so that look at these buds. That bud's gonna survive the winter? Sure is, it's gonna turn brown. It's gonna look like it's dead, but let me tell you something. Is we're gonna have hopefully three times the buds we should have had uh, because it didn't bloom, but it had all spring, summer, and fall to make new buds. So this should be loaded. This should be awesome for peony bloom in, um, in 2023. Uh, what else? We got a little seed pod here. We have some beautiful day lilies that are turning at the end. And then more beautiful coney grass. This is the Oriola um, variety. So it's variegated. It's more of an off-white with lime green and yellow. So the color is a little bit different on that one. <laughs> But it's gorgeous. So was that, that three pots you started with and it turned into that? Yes, it was. Wow. Three pots. So every time I plant something that I want sort of a mass drift of, I start with usually three pots. Um, mainly because that's all I can afford at the time. But if I'm ever rich, I'm going to start with five to seven pots. <laughs> and I'm going to have a garden that's five times the size of this. Uh, but anyway, so now this is an established, like I said, this garden is like a decade old now. Um, so every year I can slice this off in the back, take those sections and plant them elsewhere. So that way it doesn't kind of creep in on the other plants. You know what I like about this year? Remember last year, my um, Mojave Jewels Sedum, see this purpley one? So it doesn't have super big flower buds on it, but last year that flopped open. It was like, we had such a rainy season that they all laid flat and I didn't like that. So I was told that I could pinch the sedum back to make them bushier and less long, like have less longer stems and sh or shorter stems, I should just say. And then it would stop them from doing that open, like uh, laying out like, a, like whatever. So I did that and it actually worked, but you sacrifice those big mop head blooms. Like you usually get big clusters. So we'll see how this shapes up. I mean, I have a ton of little flower heads coming. It's not flopping and the grass is actually helping it. And I like this color combination too. The pink with the, uh, with the Hakoni grass. I like that. We have a little um, hydrangea in the back. I'll put the name on the screen because I cannot ever pronounce it, nor will I try. But that's beautiful, that foliage, see that? Is that just one? Yes, that's one big one. And how old is that? That's pretty old. 
that is pretty old that's like six maybe years in here um i have another one in the sun garden so this one will tolerate it's on the sunnier side of the shade garden but i also have one in the sun garden so they they tolerate pretty much a good um range of sun too which is surprising so we have some really tall cone flowers uh these are just the purpureos although look at this look at the color on that so we have a little one i'm gonna find the end of that plant probably dig that out looks like it's got some mama mia color in it so maybe those were seeds that i took from mama mia because look in the back here i also have another one with good color so that's exciting so i'm going to take those plants out and put them in a in a good spot because i love the color on them now did you plant anything in here this year it kind of yes, looks i planted those um cone flowers look how big those got huge um i planted those cone flowers those were ones that i planted from seed and you can see there's all different varieties in there like the petal forms the cone forms all of those are different and they're just from seed that i started so you don't really know what you're gonna get but you know. so you didn't do much then just that really what else honestly don't really have room for much like to add much in here Oh, and this is a branch. Yeah, it's a branch. Um, Make sure you label it so everybody knows. <laughs> kind of a silly looking thing. That okay, is a so, maple branch. Yes. Yes. Yep. I think this people will probably want to know what this oh, thing okay. is right here. Yes, that one is very popular for questions when I have my shade garden tour. Um, that is a Russian comfrey. So Russian comfrey generally is a dark solid green leaf this is a variegated variety called axminster gold it's a clump forming non-invasive non-spreading variety of russian comfrey it's also not eaten by deer not eaten by much it's fuzzy and it's got these little spiny they don't really like, go into your fingers like stinging nettle or anything but it does have this fuzzy stalk um and feel to the leaves like it's just like a kind of a rough looking you know, like if you don't shave for like three days, <laughs> that kind of feel. <laughs> look like your legs last night. Exactly. They, it has like this weird, like, I don't know. It just has this weird feel to it. So people or animals don't really like it, uh, but it's beautiful. It, it's huge, long leaves. Like it's definitely one of those standout plants. And in the spring, it sends up pink flower bell, um, pink flower bells, like blooms. So those are, that's exciting uh let's see what else do we have hosta june lakeside paisley prince is also in there tucked in sub and substance like i said is in the way back that limey foliage back there so are you gonna like thin this out a little bit or i don't know do you know why i like this garden growing in so thick because it acts as a living mulch so other than mulching when they all first come up and and we do the fertilizer which i use a spoma plant tone granular and I use Neptune's Harvest on certain plants in here, but not the whole thing. Plant Tone really does the deal, like does the trick for this garden because it's established. And the composted mulch helps um, every year as far as fertilizer goes. But I love that this grows in so tight because the weeds are like few and far between. Like, look, wherever they can find a little place to sprout, I have this instead of a whole massive line and hole full of these plants so i'm okay just walking out here and going oh look a little grass is starting i'll just pull it out like this is the event like pretty much all i do for weeding i come out and i take where they're trying to pop in it also hides them pretty well so but there's not like a lot of weeds in this garden because everything grows in and plays really nice together and it kind of shades the, the ground so sprouting seeds don't make it and the ones that do sprout and find a little way to the sunshine i just pull them out they're not it's not like a huge deal to weed this garden um you know i don't have to weed it but maybe once every two months you know i walk by and i'll just pull something out now is it possible to plant too many of them Probably. Where, where it could be a problem. So what's, what would be a bigger problem, I feel? Usually if you plant really close, they'll all find a way to like commingle and grow in nice together. If you see that one is growing over top of another one, 
Obviously you planted them too close and you didn't pay attention to the mature size. I do that a lot. I'm kind of like, oh, this got big, this got big, this got big. Um, and then you're covering ones that you want to actually show off. So then you have to move them around. Um, but what's even worse than over planting is not dividing when you need to. For example, this beast of a grass. This is the Hakoni grass variety, all gold. This is straight up lime. This is, um, I think this is my favorite variety of the Hakoni grass. The problem with this variety, once it's established, man, it just goes bonkers. Like I had, I had a patch of um, Japanese painted ferns behind this and it's buried. Like it's almost like growing over top. So if I did my duty this year, I would have sliced off <coughs> a good section of that grass <coughs> excuse me <coughs> and sort of corralled it around this corner to give that some sunshine to grow in so I do still want those ferns back there so I have to either take the ferns out and let this continue to go back or I have to divide it up and so it's really all the managing that I have to do uh, is if one is starting to sort of overpower another and I'm losing the large patch of whatever I'm growing, I have to figure out, am I going to clear it out and give it more space to keep it? Or do I like what's overtaking it and am I gonna move it, like divide and move? So- Most of these are pretty that. durable, aren't they? Yeah. Like you could split a hosta in half oh, and it- easy, yeah. Oh All yeah. This stuff. Honestly, if I wanted to, I could take, in the spring, I could divide every single thing in this garden in half hostas and grass flies and ferns and make a whole nother garden and literally probably within two or three years it would be the same size these are big hostas like big sections and honestly if i divided them up and replanted the section we wouldn't even have to worry like it, it would probably would come up bigger and better and the leaf because they're not so crammed in and there's not so many eyes trying to come up and and flourish so yeah, but that's how, so this garden didn't do bad at all for having a dry season. Everything really plays well in here. The colors, the textures, you know, this is kind of getting a little bit messy. Um, still waiting for the ivory halo dogwood to sort of fill in back there as a backdrop. Cause I think that's going to be amazing back there just to have that white and green pop. And we have to move around some of these, like these are too tall for where they're at. So I have to figure out where I'm gonna put those, but I'll take those out and then probably maybe take a section of a hosta that's getting too big and plug it in there. So if so, I like wanted a little piece of this thing, I could kind of chop it off and as long yeah. as I have a little root to it. So this is interesting, if you come in here. Cause I might want to snag one so of these. So you see, see this? Yeah. This is one plant. This is one plant. This is one plant. There's a few plants in here. So in the spring, they all come up and they're tiny. They're like this big around and they grow into these massive things. So if you wanted to in the spring, I could divide each one of those and start plugging them around and they would all grow huge. So, so, so this spring we could like separate a few of those and put them in my garden. I've done that. I've given them away. I've given sections to people um in the spring because i know if i leave too many if i have seven or eight of those little guys and i leave them that's gonna really it's gonna start to take over the lakeside paisley print it's gonna start to take over um the hooker is in the front so i know that i need to keep that small and i like that because it's a little focal point it draws that lemony lime color from the grasses and the hosta it kind of moves your eye this way so i need that and then I like that the lime in the back, you also pull your eye that way. The lime in the shade garden is a huge deal. I feel like if you place your lime colored foliage plants properly, you will just have such a nice cohesive garden. Um, what do you think, Zoe? You got anything to say? Huh? You got anything to say? And if you plant your leg properly, <laughs> you can squat. Yeah. Actually, the good thing is that she's a girl, so she doesn't lift her leg on my plants. She squats in the grass. So we have brown spots in the lawn from, you know, dog pee, but for the most part, she's a good girl. Huh. 
Yeah, well, she's been rolling around over in my garden, messing around there. Have you weeded your garden? Because I've had multiple people comment, did Brian weed his garden yet? Let's take a look. Uh, we should uh, add this to the well, tour. Well, listen, I've Let's been busy. See. Now, wait no, a minute. No, no, no. I've been busy helping you. I have. Uh, you can't use that anymore. Yes, no. I can. Let's look at this gorgeous garden. If you look at it from far away, it's pretty. Uh, but if you notice... It's just full of stuff. Look, there's some golden jubilee hyssop Yes, here. there is. There's some variegated Solomon seal. There's some black-eyed Susan. Look there's at that. There's hookahs, I definitely, what I love most is the light purple goes with my beautiful violet and pink flower here. Do you know what that is? Actually, I can't even see what you're talking right about. Right here, this little flower in here. Oh, it's a phlox. Yes, it is. Congratulations. Oh I didn't think God. you were going to figure that one out. I should have actually asked you what it was first because I know you just made me say that so you could learn what it was. So, yeah, uh, I think you should, like, give me some of your hostas. I'm not going to give it to you until you take care of your garden. I sound like my like me lecturing my son. Okay, I can't give that to you unless I, knew, I know that you take care of it. I was um, looking for, like, a, a more wild look, you know, wildflowers. Actually, you know what? You know what? be good you're not going to do wildflowers in the shade well so you got a thing to do a thing or two to learn about sun exposure and plants that do well but i will say a lot of this stuff like the black eyed susans they look pretty darn good and the golden jubilee hyssop is blooming um so it does get enough sun to bloom so you might be able to do some part shade part sun plants in there some flowers but i can give you some of that russian comfrey that would look great if you just plugged it in your Brunner back there that I gave you is really just needs no, to be cleared. No, it's looking good. It it's, is, but it needs to be cleared. I definitely have to spend a little time weeding, but I'm thinking about having a curved edge on the one side, you know, and maybe putting in a hydrangea. Oh, good. oh boy, here we go. Here we go. Or something Stay like tuned, that. folks. We got, we have some, some big plans for the Brian I've, garden. Watch I've been doing me. a stone wall. Would you like to show people that hard yes, work? Yes, but first I want show people what I found this morning uh -oh. so you know I always take film the garden from this perspective because I love it I love the meandering border I love that big tree so this morning I'm out here and I never really go around the back side of the garden um and so I'm just like peeking over this and I'm like oh I like those three chairs there can you see them yes and I'm looking at it this way and I'm like, oh, this is really cool. So I'm like up here, you know, like a little kid. And I'm taking pictures. And I love it because the tree is like the focal point almost. But I have like the little lounge area where you would sit and watch the garden. And then you get to see the curves of the garden from up here. And you still can showcase the boulder in the front of the picture. That's like my little, it was like my little uh, photographic like aha moment this morning. I'm like, I actually may have another perspective of this garden that I love to film because I do love that front border um but this was so cool I just it was just like fascinating to me uh so, you have to admit though that red hose and the the yellow tractor really do no no no, no. all right good. so let me show you oh, so this is what I did I got up close here like this and look at that that's where I took the picture yeah well you don't have isn't that cool so there now the hose is not in it and that is such a cool picture like that's almost, I don't know, it's almost amazing. And I'm really shaky with my <laughs> photography because I'm not you, but but anyway. So yeah, I was kind of like messing around with like taking pictures and finding a new perspective. So that was fun. It's always nice to find something new on your property, well, I just, isn't like, it? You know, I love, I love taking pictures too. Like, you know, it kind of captures, if a picture can capture what I feel when I look at my garden or when I'm just relaxing and looking at it, which is hardly ever. Um, in the winter, when I'm looking at these photos, I remember this stuff. It rec I recall it all in my head. So it's like, if I can capture something really cool in the picture, it does provide some like helpful, uh, helpful days to kill in the winter when I can recall my garden. It keeps something. you off the internet oh, and no, it definitely does not ordering do that. flowers. Definitely does not do that. Anyway, do you want to see what we're doing over here? Oh, yeah, we do. Because this is Brian's project. So this is this is why his garden is not weeded, apparently. I don't know. Uh, but we have 
awesome stone borders around the property. And so last year, was it last year and the year before? Like we just started making this little curved border. Um, and this year he is like continuing all the way down the driveway, which is amazing. So I really want to start planting up behind this stone wall and sort of have this view from the front porch, the stone wall border, ferns, hostas. So I may have to divide up some things, those grasses. Oh, how cool would that look? Did some of the grasses yes. in there? So in the spring, you can help me dig and divide that, that shade garden. And you could probably put an entire version of the shade garden all up in this area. That's a great idea. You're so, welcome. Congratulations on that. Uh, but anyway, so this is, I mean, it's already got some deer. The, the problem, it's got some hostas, I should say. The deer do get over here. Oh, look at this guy. Well, we kind of just Look threw it over one. here. Yes, it hey. Eaten, but it's coming back. Very resilient. There's also poison ivy in here, so I won't be helping too much with it, but... Well, um, I did plant a few things. Like, what is that back there with the purple? Is that a is that a plant of any... Yes, what is that? I can't think of it off I, the top of my head. Eupatorium. I did plant a bunch of stuff right in it's here. It's like that eupatorium. See it? Oh. It's flowering. That's what it is. Now it's it, pretty. It's like, and it's almost, I, think, I don't know if it's native, but it looks native. <laughs> and we kind of threw a little bit of these. Um, yes, we have some Christmas ferns, ferns and some here. ostrich ferns. And because it's really shady and dry, they don't really take off, which is kind of not what we want them to do. But, um, but we have sections going in back there. There's some painted ferns back there. There's some peonies that we found growing in gardens that didn't belong there. So we're just sort of plugging, this will be like the new holding garden until it turns into something. Um, but yeah, so he just literally started and continued. Um, and the rocks, believe it or not, um, get dumped in our gravel pit. We have a landscape um, company that um, uses our gravel bank to just like dump in and um, all that good stuff. So a little clean fill. Yeah. So when he, um, he, when he takes out rocks or moves them or does some excavation work, we can take advantage of the rocks because he dumps them in there. And every time we hear them, we're like, oh, we can go get more rocks. So, we? Well, you, but I say we because this is like a joint project. Only you do it. <laughs> it's fun because when I'm doing it, I'm like, this is going to be here a hundred years from now. Honestly, probably. My great grandkids stuff. are going to be like, your grandfather was a man. Oh, my God. Probably not no, like probably that. Not. But. I like I like the charm of stone walls. I think it really adds something to like I think it really adds something to the property and to the borders and I everything. love the charm of the garbage that your dog continues yeah. to drag out and put all over the property. I know. She does do that. Yes. I am not, not I am not She does. That. Um yeah, I actually had a huge bin of um I cleaned out my car for like the first time and i don't know how long and i had a huge bin and bag full of like you know water bottles and lunch wrappers and kids stuff and she i left my hatch open in the back and she jumped in and grabbed it and it was like all over the front yard so blake got the pleasure of picking it all up for me today but um yeah yeah that's it but anyway so that's the shade garden update for 2022 plus a little bit more on the property as we're working our way down. Um, nothing too exciting back there yet, but I think that it's going to probably fill in. Uh, we are still in the works with our um, garage, barn, greenhouse, expanded vegetable garden. So, you know, it's like slow as molasses. It's slow as Hosta Andrew. So it's going to be <laughs> slow. Take so, your time. I'm not a very, you know, gardening is supposed to teach patience, but I will tell you, I think the more I garden, the less patient I am. I want like instant plants. I don't, I want like, you know, I don't want to wait five years for the garden to be mature. I want it to be mature the year I plant it, but it's a little, you know, a little over the top, but you know, a lot of, I think a lot of people are like, oh, they want this, but it's like, you got to plant little polka dot plants first and then they'll start to fill in. Nobody wants to wait. That's a long time to wait, but you got to do it because that's how it goes. Because good things come but here's to the those thing. who wait. Oh, that was very inspirational. Hey. Um, but the thing also too, is if you do start planting, like do a couple things this year 
And then next year, those are going to be bigger, like in, they're going to be the year two plants. And then you add more plants. And then the following year, you have the third year leap on your original plantings. And then you have the second year um, creep on the plants that you planted the last year. And then you have new ones. You keep adding. Your garden will be mature. But if you don't start making a move, like if you don't plant something because it feels so overwhelming and you don't have the money to spend on a huge garden, start small. It, 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 trust me, over time, like I can't believe I've already been doing this for over 10 years. But I can tell you the things that I went gung ho on and planted and just kind of like left and forgot about are now amazing mature plants. So, yeah. Well, it's kind of like this stone wall. It would be overwhelming if I tried to do it all at once. Yeah. But as you can see. Every year you do it. Yeah, I do a more. little bit when I have time. And in five years, it'll be down at the bottom of the driveway. I know. It's just a very, very fun thing to look at and you don't have to do any maintenance. Rocks require zero <laughs> maintenance, fertilizer, water, anything. Um, good place for snakes and stuff to hide too, uh, who are our best friends. And the size of the snakes this year, holy cow. So in a sense, okay. building this stone wall will bring the snakes, which- A little bit, they'll bring them a little closer for sure. Now um, snakes are good for your garden? Yeah. Because they eat toads? Well, they eat lots of things, but yes, essentially, they eat things that you don't really want and things that you kind of do want. We Remember the one on the patio that ate the, the toad? We had literally like an anaconda-sized garter snake, and it was on the patio. Dare we show that video? I don't know. It was graphic. It was, yeah, it was pretty awful, and I, I usually like kind of shy away from interfering. And this one, I couldn't interfere if I wanted to because the snake, I, I literally had to watch this massive snake eat a toad that was like this size. And I'm like, how in God's name is that snake going to eat the toad? And he was massive. And I literally just kept going back and watching him. And it was um, disturbing and fascinating and awful and cool at the same time. And it's pretty graphic. Like, if I put that in this video, people would probably give me hate mail. Um, but we could upload it, and if you, and we'll put a warning that if you have a, a strong stomach, you can watch it. But it's pretty, like, I mean, it's sad because I love the, I love the toads. Um, but just the way that it happened, and the way that the snake was able to just devour the whole thing. But the problem is the frog is, or the toad is alive the whole time. So that kind of was disturbing me because I feel like, I don't know. I, you feel like you can't do anything. He's already like- Yeah, but paralyzed. we saved it. No. Oh, you're talking about a couple of weeks later. Yeah. Yeah, no. we did save we the did big save, toad. We did save one, but he probably got eaten by the anaconda on the deck, on the patio. So, yeah, I but saved- anyway, that was, it was like one of those, I came home and it, it, was, it had already started it. So like the frog wouldn't have been able to hop with its back feet had I interfered. So you can't interfere. But you know, when they first get them and you can like, and, and why do I do that? I don't know. You feel like you're saving them, but it is, that's, it's only happening every day probably here. Um, <clears throat> but For all you story. know, he already ingested them once and just puked them up. Ugh. But the thing is, it was weird because he had the big blob in his stomach and it's not like they chew them. Like snakes are pretty weird. Like the way that they eat things whole and then just like are fine for a few days and they don't have to eat. I don't know. Well, they can't move. If he... Yeah, I know him slithering his belly was like, there was like a big blob, but it, it does start to thin out. Like it almost starts to compress. Um, but anyway. So well, how was... do you know when a snake's <laughs> pregnant or when a snake just ate a nice meal? probably hard to tell i'm sure the the bulge is in the different different position i don't really know actually i should i should research that because we have a ton of those little babies uh, back by the corner of the house we always have little miniature garter snakes but you know it happened it, it's fine it's fine one of those things that wonder you know, if their farts smell like frogs <sighs> what Makes sense. It's an honest right question. Right now, right now, someone is eye rolling as I'm eye rolling and saying, <laughs> "This guy needs to stop yapping behind the camera." <laughs> Whatever. It's time to end this tour, isn't it?
Yes, that is it for the shade garden and rock wall garden project um, for 2022. And then, uh, yeah, it's pretty soon. Cutbacks, dividing. Yeah, work again, yeah. it feels like. Yeah, a little bit. It's been nice to enjoy the garden, watching it blossom. Yeah. But, yeah, it does let you know that, oof. Spring and, and fall are pretty busy here. Right? Zoe, you going to help? Look at her. You going to help? No, she's going to just keep... Throwing lazy, stuff on the lawn. You're a big lazy bum. The grass can't grow because there's always garbage on top of it. <laughs> She's a good girl. She'll, she'll just sit here and let me rub her belly all day, though. Yeah, well, she better watch out because one of these gardener snakes might get her. I'd like to see that. She'd be winging that thing around the trees. Huh. Beautiful. Yeah. Peace out. All right.